Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here and today I'm going to be doing a DVD and Blu-ray update for May 2015. Uh, I did my previous update at the beginning of April but that more or less just showcased all the things that I bought in March so this update being quite substantial is just April's and um, May's pickups so that's why it's quite large. So I guess I'll begin with the Blu-rays. I picked up six Blu-rays and the first one is of course the complete third series of Sherlock. I showed the second series in my previous update but I hadn't watched it at that point but honestly I was blown away by the finale of that series. Uh, I thought it was one of the most perfect pieces of television I had seen in a long time and just the whole finale itself it was just so intense and uh, I had to pick this up straight away so I bought this on eBay for £6 and uh, just after seeing um, the first episode I was just so relieved to be honest. Um, that's how intense the second series finale was because I just needed an explanation for all the events that had occurred. So I was um, quite satisfied with the writing of this series. So yeah, um, the second episode wasn't as good on this series, but I thought the third one was absolutely fantastic. And um, that's mainly because it stars one of my favourite actors, Mads Mikkelsen, who portrayed a villain in this. And I know the actor for portraying Hannibal Lecter in the TV show Hannibal. And uh, yeah, I picked, this is the special edition version of the third series, which comes with a bonus disc. And I believe some of the content on that bonus disc is um, relating to the upcoming special that comes out at the end of the year. So that should be good. And uh, yeah, that's the third series of Sherlock. Next up is Star Trek Into Darkness. I bought the first film on DVD and quite enjoyed it. And uh, ever since watching that, I've been gunning to try and pick this up. And I just never did. So I looked up on eBay and found it quite cheap on Blu-ray. So I bought that. And uh, I've not watched this yet, but I am looking forward to checking it out. I really did um, like the, uh, the acting from Simon Pegg in the first one, even though he wasn't really um, in it for that long. So I'm looking forward to seeing perhaps a longer performance from him in this uh, movie. So that's Star Trek Into Darkness. Next up is Argo, the extended cut. I saw this on eBay um, with like 10 minutes remaining and uh, the Blu-ray was new sealed and it was under £2 including postage so uh, I checked out the trailer and just bought it for the sake of having a new sealed Blu-ray. Um, yeah, it was quite a good film to be honest. I thought the beginning was quite slow. Uh, it stars Ben Affleck, Brian Cranston and John Goodman so of course it does, has, um, it does have some decent quality. Um, but yeah, I really did quite enjoy the storyline. I thought the ending, the latter hour, was much more um, superior than the beginning, uh, even though the intro was quite intriguing. So uh, that's Argo, the extended cut, and uh, since I got this new sealed, if anyone wants the ultraviolet code, then you are welcome to it. Uh, oh, it's expired, so... Um, yeah, I think you can uh, try the UV codes, even if they are expired. It's only off by... Uh, a couple of months but perhaps it will work so if you want to try that then you are welcome to so that's Argo the extended cut next up is the Wolverine starring Hugh Jackman I've picked up all of the X-Men movies all of them on DVD um, but I picked up the Wolverine on blu-ray since this was the exact same price as the DVD copy so I thought I'd just pick up the Blu-ray for the sake of it, and uh, surprisingly it was a decent film. The ending was a little bit ludicrous, but I thought the film on the whole did have some decency towards it. Uh, apparently it, um, uh, the story of this doesn't follow the comic book, which is kind of annoying when um, films do that, when they are based on comic books, but it could have been worse, and uh, I thought Hugh Jackman was quite decent in this film, so that's The Wolverine. And uh, finishing off the Blu-rays, I picked up Cars and Cars 2. Uh, I bought the first Cars on, um, actually no, I picked it up in CEX for £3. And as a kid when I watched this, I didn't really think much of it. I thought it was quite dry and dull for a Pixar film, but uh, re-watching it, I actually quite enjoyed it. It's got quite a lot of adult euphemisms, which I believe is why it's a, um, rated PG unlike the other film, but yeah, I thought um, I thought it was a lot better than when I first originally watched it, so that's the first Cars movie. And the sequel, which I looked up on IMDb, and it has a lower rating than the first Cars movie, but I think this has so much more to it. Uh, it's not really about the uh, main car, Lightning McQueen, it's more or less following the story of the, uh, the tow truck Mater. And uh, yeah, I just thought this was so much better. The casting was better, it stars Michael Caine as... Um, a secret agent car. 
Um, however, reading some reviews, uh, even though this is a kid's film, many kids didn't understand it, which is quite bizarre. Uh, the structure of the story isn't really a linear um, narrative, but I thought it was actually quite a lot more... There was a lot more to it than the first film, in my opinion. That's why I thoroughly enjoyed it. Plus, I liked the uh, secret agent sci-fi element, shall we say. It's not really science fiction, but um, yeah, I really did enjoy this film, so that's Cars 2. And I also picked this up, New Sealed, which I don't know whether there is any movie reward codes or anything in there. Um, there is a code which has expired for picking up a DVD copy of the film to make this into a double play, which I have missed out on, so that's kind of annoying, but yeah, that's Cars 2 on Blu-ray. And now on to the DVDs. So beginning with the DVDs, first up is the complete 8th series of uh, Futurama, the final series, which is really, really unfortunate. But I've been waiting to pick this up for quite a while. I was going to pre-order it on Amazon, but I just really didn't bother since the 7th uh, series came down in price quite quickly. Um, but this stayed up uh, at an extortion price, so I just paid that since I really just wanted the box set for the collection. And yeah, I really did enjoy re-watching all the episodes. Uh, it's such a shame that the series is off the air. This series has so much potential, unlike Matt Groening's other series, The Simpsons. And I am just really am gutted that it's over. But the episodes on this are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the finale was really well written, unlike the uh, finales of the other three series that Comedy Central created. And uh, yeah, I really did enjoy this series. The only bummer about this actual box set is that I bought this in HMV and didn't really think much of it, but it doesn't come with the um, little cards that were advertised in the seventh series. That's probably because I waited um, a few months before picking this up since um, I think all the brand, brand new copies that were first released, first editions came with those collector cards, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I enjoyed the series and the DVD looks terrific. So that's the complete eighth series of Futurama. Next up is a series that I got into accidentally really, and that is Firefly. And uh, I've seen Firefly advertised everywhere, and everyone was singing its praises, but it was only uh, 14 episodes long, which um, I thought, eh, it's not really worth getting into then if this is it. But honestly, I really enjoyed this series. It's one of my top uh, top 10 favorite TV shows of all time. I love Nathan Fillion's acting in this, and uh, Joss Whedon, who directed and wrote this series, I just thought this was absolutely perfect and one of the best things I've ever seen. Uh, it's probably one of the more realistic sci-fi um, TV shows I've ever seen, so which makes it more believable and much more, shall we say, brilliant. And uh, yeah, it's a four disc set. Uh, it's the complete series, which Fox, um, who first aired this, uh, the Fox Channel fucked it up completely. Uh, played all the episodes out of sync, and just, ugh, I really cannot believe that this um, perfect TV show had to go through so much torture when being aired for the first time. But yeah, um, Firefly, if you've not seen it, the first episode is like um, two hours long, maybe a little bit more or a little bit less, but. Um, yeah, the first episode is really difficult to follow, but if you stick with it, it all makes sense if you keep watching till the ending of the second episode, so yeah, that's Firefly, the complete series, really enjoyed it. And following up to Firefly was a movie that came out just after Firefly had um, finished, and that's Serenity. And they were planning to make sequels of this movie, but they killed off a couple of the main actors who um, said they perhaps could not um, join in for sequels. So this really just killed Firefly dead. And um, yeah, it was actually quite a decent film. It was much more intense than the actual Firefly TV show, but it just didn't feel... Um, it didn't feel the innocence of the TV show, which is quite strange. But yeah, Serenity, I thought it was a decent storyline and okay conclusion to the show. Um, but yeah, I definitely would recommend checking out Firefly and Serenity. Perfect um, television, in my opinion. Next up is The Machinist, starring Christian Bale, which this film was recommended to me by my friend TV DVD Mega Clips, a.k.a. Dean. And uh, he said this was, this was a decent film, so I picked it up. And honestly, the acting from Christian Bale and uh, the script to the film was absolutely pure genius, and I really did enjoy it. Uh, it's one of those films that, uh, after watching it, you reflect on, and it just all makes sense from that reflection. Um, but yeah, the main storyline is Christian Bale's character at the um, beginning is uh, dealing with committing an unspeakable act, shall we say, without spoiling um, the film and basically the ending shows the unspeakable act and what he did and um, 
more or less that reflects on why in the film he is suffering with anorexia, why he is an insomniac, and why he is having all these bizarre schizophrenic uh, paranoid visions. But yeah, um, I really did enjoy this film thoroughly. This came out before Batman Begins. And a little bit of trivia, um, Christian Bale really did um, lose all that weight um, in order to suit the uh, the character of um, this film that was suffering with anorexia. And I just really thought that that is commitment in acting full stop. He probably had a health specialist helping him. Uh, not die, shall we say, but yeah, it just, it really is a huge commitment, and I thought the film on the whole was absolutely phenomenal. So that's The Machinist. Next up is a film that really did disappoint me, and that is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Uh, I checked out a couple of reviews online after watching about 40 minutes of this film, which is all I could really tolerate, and, um, Many were saying that they didn't understand it, and I'm one of those people. And I believe that is because I've not read the book, and I've not read, uh, I've not seen rather the BBC television show that was based around um, the story of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. And the film was apparently a letdown for fans of the TV show and the book. And I don't know, it's just I really regret buying this. Actually, it's got a really good cast, and I just thought, yeah, it sounds good, it looks good. Um, but yeah, uh, even with all these five star ratings, I just do not, um, like this film and that is definitely because I do not get it. I just, it seems like the most dull and repetitive, uh, piece of film I've seen in a long time. And, uh, it just seems like a film, uh, done by cinematography, uh, cinematographist rather than an actual director or, um, writer. So, ugh, that's, um, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Next up is 4, which I'd never checked out for, which um, was quite surprising really, but I did enjoy watching this. Didn't think I'd enjoy it as much as I did, but I do now appreciate 4 as a character more than I uh, used to. I never really got into the whole 4 storyline, but yeah, I quite enjoyed the film and I thought seeing Anthony Hopkins in this was great and just, um, yeah, Chris's acting in this was genius, so... Yeah, that's four. Um, cannot wait to pick up for The Dark World, which I'll pick up at some point very soon. Next up is The Big Lebowski. Now, if you've not seen this film, you are missing out completely. It's one of my favourite films of all time. I just never owned it, which is really quite foolish of me. But yeah, The Big Lebowski came out um, in 98, I believe. And oh, it's just one of the most uh, brilliant comedies of um, the 90s. And yeah... If you've not seen this film, you are definitely missing out. It's hilarious in every single way, and just definitely watch it. I really don't want to give too many spoilers, but it just is the most perfect comedy in my opinion. Uh, yeah, so that's The Big Lebowski. Next up is Will Ferrell in Anchorman. I never really liked this film, but I bought it anyway because it was so cheap, and it grew on me. I mean, the comedy elements are typical American comedy, which is not exactly my favourite um, thing out of TV and film, but yeah, it was pretty decent, and I thought Steve Carell was the funniest thing about this film. Will Ferrell's acting in this is quite good as well, plus um, the most hilarious joke being the um, teleprompter scene. I thought that was much more funnier than when I originally watched it, so that's Anchorman. And now, ending this update with um, six films, which I've been putting off till the end, and that is all the X-Men movies which I've picked up all of them from the first X-Men film to Days of Future Past. And uh, yeah, I thought the first film was quite decent. It wasn't great, but it did have um, some decent plot points. And it was a nice introduction to all the X-Men characters in the film. Uh, in film version, basically. And uh, the sequel more or less did that as well, reinforced that kind of storyline. But yeah, the third one was a little bit of a letdown. They introduced way too many mutants in this, and it just didn't really follow as being a, uh, a good film like the other two movies. But uh, it's watchable and tolerable, plus the effects are a lot more, shall we say, better than the first two films. And that's because these were made in the, um, I think, just after year 2000, maybe 2000, 2003. And uh, I think this came out in 05. I'm not 100% on the release dates of these movies, but yeah, this would seem like the more superior one regarding effects but regarding writing it just seemed really really poor and quite tedious 
then we have X-Men Origins Wolverine, which was good until the ending. I just really hated what they did to Deadpool in this movie, and that is what pissed me off. Just, I really do not like this movie. There's always one um, X-Men movie, apparently, and it's between these two that somebody hates, and I cannot stand um, X-Men Origins Wolverine, so that's that. It was okay, it just really did annoy me towards the end. And now ending with two good films, we have X-Men First Class, which in my opinion was the most superior one out of all the uh, previous X-Men movies. Uh, I just thought the storyline of this was really good. It was great how they were sort of reinventing the whole X-Men series uh, for this movie. And even though now the first few films are pretty much inferior, um, this film is definitely worth picking up uh, after seeing, of course, the first four. And uh, I really enjoyed the storyline. I thought the look-alike uh, younger actors who portrayed the um, younger Professor X and Magneto, I thought they were great look-alikes towards Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen. Uh, perhaps um, this dude who portrays the younger Magneto was more like Ian McKellen than uh, the other guy who was supposed to be looking like Patrick Stewart. But yeah, I thought the whole storyline was... Absolutely genius. I really enjoyed the uh, introduction of so many uh, younger characters, plus the um, little cameo scene with Hugh Jackman in this was absolutely hilarious and just had me in stitches. So that's the X-Men First Class. And onto my favourite film from the X-Men series is Days of Future Past, which I thought was the best... Uh, one of the best Marvel films I've seen in ages and just I loved the sequence with uh, Quicksilver I thought his character was really underused that character had so much potential um, but yeah it was just absolutely amazing I loved seeing Halle Berry return as Storm and just the whole plot points and storyline uh, was genius plus the new look of um, the young Charles Xavier with the Edgar Wright haircut I thought that was genius as well um, but yeah Great story, really amazing uh, movie, and I would definitely recommend checking out these two movies at least, even though they won't make as much sense if you've not seen the uh, previous four X-Men movies. But yeah, these two are definitely the superior ones, and I cannot wait for X-Men uh, Apocalypse to drop in 2016. So thank you for watching my update. Um, if, you've stick, uh, if you've stuck with me, it's been quite a long one this time, but... Uh, yeah, I appreciate feedback and definitely comment below if you want me to review any of the titles I've shown in this video. Uh, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and uh, a subscription, so please subscribe and check out my other reviews on movies, TV shows and more updates that come every month. So yeah, thanks for watching.